Hey everyone, it's Derry Ab, John Llewellyn Davis, aka The Strategy Man. International speaker, consultant, mentor, and author of the number one Amazon best-selling book, Strategy on a Page. Welcome to this blog, which is How Big Are Your Business Balls? I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed filming that one, and my ops done marketing director nearly didn't let me film, show that photo, so I'm so excited I managed to sneak it past them. But anyway, we're going to talk about risk today. There's this myth out there, I think, amongst entrepreneurs. There's almost like a legend that's been sown, which all of us entrepreneurs and business owners, we're massive gamblers, you know, massive risk takers, because that's what you have to be to an entrepreneur. You have to be this massive risk taker and a gambler. But interestingly, I found over the years that that is not the case. And we're going to talk about the extremes of that in a minute. Now, I'll put my hands up. In my 20s, I was definitely a risk taker. In my early businesses, certainly in the first businesses I had, I was much more of a gambler um, <laughs> on the side of gambling in business rather than on the risk mitigation side. Now, what I see about people who are uh, been in business for a while, certainly the veteran entrepreneurs out there, we're actually risk mitigators. That's what we do, and that's the whole point of it. So I want to blow a few myths apart around this today. But let's talk about the two extremes here. So well, there's one extreme on, on risk, which is the gamblers. It's the roll of the dice, people. I, I've got a great um, story of a friend of mine who's multi-generation. I think he's fourth, fifth generation now, aristocracy. And his grandma lost most of the family fortune betting on flies on a wall. Seriously. This is, she literally used to bet on whether the fly would take off the wall or not take off the wall in the next minute, and she used to spend you know, thousands, and this was back in the early 1900s. So that's gambling. But I have to admit, that's a lot better odds than most business owners are taking out there, because at least with a fly on the wall, you've got a 50-50 chance. So you have that extreme of gambling. On the other extreme, you have extreme you know, perfectionism, which is you won't move until it absolutely has to be perfect. Every T has to be crossed, every I has to be dotted. There has to be an element of perfection in everything before you actually make any move whatsoever. And both don't work. You know, there's extremes there, but there's obviously a spectrum in the middle. The question is, where do you sit on that spectrum? And where sh should business owners fit? I think there's an element, there's, an, there's a gray area in the middle where we should be slotting ourselves. We should be classing ourselves as risk mitigators. And that's the point of strategy. Strategy is there to mitigate risk. People look at me and look at the adventurous side to me. For those who don't know, I've run six marathons across the Sahara Desert, climbed five of the highest mountains in the world, and recently completed the Ironman Challenge. So I'm no fool when it comes to risk. And a lot of people look at that, particularly on my mountaineering and my ultra endurance stuff, and think that I'm a massive risk taker. And it couldn't be further from the truth because it's actually, again, on the mountains, it's about risk mitigation. Now, I knew how risky things were getting on my, one of the last mountains I did, which was Denali or Mount McKinley, highest mountain in America, based up in the depths of Alaska. It's only one of two mountains next to Everest in the world where they won't insure you to go on the mountain. I had to get specialist insurance and to pay a lot of money. So you know at that point, actually, you're taking some risk. When the insurance, co the insurance companies are basically risk mitigators, that's what they're doing. So when they were not going to insure you, you know you're taking risk. But again, I mitigate everything along the way. On the mountains, I'm looking at every form of risk. So I'm looking at the best time of year, the best seasons, the best guides, looking at statistics on the mountain, checking the kit and making sure the risk factors are on the kit. So as a mountaineer, as an explorer, it's my job to mitigate the risks as much as possible. There's more risk of you going in a car, getting killed in a car accident than there is than climbing a mountain in some instances if you mitigate the risk right. So I've taken, you know, everything I do in adventure I bring into business, which is about risk mitigation. And when on a mountain, like being in a business, if there's any doubt whatsoever, and it's a doubt that's likely to kill you on a mountain, I choose life and I turn back. It's the same for business. Let's make sure that we don't take risks which are going to gamble the whole company on them, but we take them carefully. So one thing I've learned along the way is risk is never perfect. You can mitigate it as much as you can, but then you've got to make a call. Somewhere along the way, you've got to just do something. And it's about this perfectionism. Back in 2008, I learned this the hard way. I faced the perfect storm in business. If you remember back in 2007, 2008, in the UK, America market, slightly different timings, but that whole collapse of the property empires. At that time, I was right in the middle of that, and we predicted the perfect storm. We predicted the collapse. If you looked at studied economics, it was, it was coming. 
and we stepped in after the collapse actually with the perfect strategy in the perfect time and if you look back on that the risk was mitigated brilliantly the banks backed us everybody was in game that we were the clever ones who predicted the property collapse but even then risk wasn't perfect because what happened the banks collapsed now I didn't spot that one coming and for those of you out there who did well done you because I did not many of my friends did either so strategy is never perfect risk is never perfect and after that that was a bad time for me that was the time I went bankrupt I went down the same time as the banks went down there's no coincidence there and here's what I learned would I do the same again yes I would because it gets to a point where you have enough information on the table where you've got to make a call and if I went right back with the information I had at hand, I would do exactly the same thing again because the information I had at hand told us to make that call. What we didn't predict was the banking collapse. Not many people did, so I think we were in pretty safe hands with a lot of other people on that one. But the only perfect science is hindsight. And all we can do is learn from the mistakes we've made and move forward and not be crippled by the indecision of not making those mistakes along the way. So here's the thing. There's always risk. And entrepreneurs come to me to raise money, oh, there's no risk in this. There's always risk. And it just depends on to what level of risk there is. Because there's always something we can't see. We cannot predict the future perfectly. If you can, please contact me. I'd be very interested to know. Uh, but we're always taking that element of risk. But we've got to make the call. But here's the thing. Sometimes the biggest risk of all is not taking risk. The biggest risk of all is not doing anything. It's the risk of regret. And I know one thing for sure. When I go out on the final whistle, when I'm done and this life's over for me, I would much rather live with failure than with regret. And I learned this the hard way. 10 years ago, I'd lost my father. It was very quick passing. It wasn't expected. And it was a tough time for all of us, for everyone who's lost close ones to them. You know what I mean. But here's the thing. The death and the passing of my father was one thing, but the sad thing was that the regret that went with it, because he died with his dreams intact. He'd failed early on in business and he never came back. He had dreams that he wanted to do and he never did them. He died with regret. That is not something I want to go down. And I, look, I encourage you as the entrepreneur that that is something I really don't want you. I want to be, I'm helping people build the right businesses and ones with no regret. That comes in the personal life and in the business life. Sometimes you want to make that call. Sometimes you're a bit scared. It's normal. You're going to make some failures along the way. It's normal. I've made loads and continue to do so. So just understand this, how big are your business balls? It's not about having a big set of balls and taking entrepreneurial risk. It's about mitigating the risk with all the facts on the table as much as possible then making a call, being happy with the call, and maybe you have to adjust, maybe it doesn't work out. And, but be careful, I encourage people to make the call and make sure it doesn't sink them. So if you're gonna take a risk, take a good, what is the worst that could happen? And if the worst that can happen is you make it, you learn, you fail, you move on, great. If it's gonna kill you or kill your business, think carefully about that. I used to make, the, the risks I took in my early 20s was if it failed, it failed and it was all over for me. Uh, and those are way beyond what I needed to do at those times in my life. And I've learned quite a lot of lessons along the way. So think about that. What does risk mean to you? Where are you on that spectrum? Are you just going to be crippled and sit there paralyzed, not making any decisions? Or are you going to you just rolling the guy dice and betting on flies on the wall? Just get the, mitigate the risk with as much information on the table and plan. This is where strategy comes in. Strategy on a page helps you mitigate that risk. So it gives you the clarity and the certainty and helps you step piece by piece into strategy along the way. So here at BGI, strategy on a page, we've created some great new free training resource for you. So if you want to go in and get the first three, three chapters of the book and the audio and a whole training program to take you deeper onto risk and helping mitigate the risk with a good solid strategic plan, then sign up above and you'll get all the resources we can give you. So Come and join the revolution in strategic planning. We'd love to have you along for the ride, and I'll see you in the next blog.